Okay, so <clears throat> we're going to go through five concepts. Uh, Dave, you want to come up, please? So uh, before NHGRI or any institute at NIH can publish a funding opportunity announcement that has a set aside of funds associated with it, they must undergo concept clearance in an open or public meeting. Now, we use the, co the open session of the council for every funding opportunity, whether it's an RFA that has funds associated with it or not, just so our council is aware of all of the research programs that uh, we are supporting. So we're going to begin with the uh, LC program announcements for R01, R03, and R21 applications. This is a PAR, and Dave Kaufman, Program Director in Genomes and Society, is going to give the presentation. Thank you. Hello, everyone. I'm presenting the Division of Genomics and Society's concept to renew the three ethical, legal, and social implications research program funding announcements. <clears throat> We're seeking to renew these current announcements for the R01, R03, and R21 mechanisms, which are expiring this July. The purpose of these funding announcements is to continue serving as the main mechanisms to support investigator-initiated research on the ethical, legal, and social implications of human genetics and genomics, which we fondly uh, refer to as LC research. Applications to all three of these PARs address four broad areas that surround genetics and genomics. The first is genomics and sociocultural structures and values. The second is genomic research design and implementation. The third is genomic healthcare. And the fourth is genomics at the institutional and systems level. Details about each of these areas can be found uh, on the LC Research Program website. And I'll post that link. That link's at the bottom of the, uh, of the slide. And I'll, I'll post it uh, in the chat when I get back to my seat. Um, but I'll also say a little bit more about that fourth area, uh, systems, in just a moment. As in the past, applications that come into these PARs uh, from multi multidisciplinary teams are expected and encouraged. Um, and applicants can use a, a single method or mixed methods uh, in response, depending on their project. Applications can use empirical, qualitative, and quantitative methods and conceptual, legal, and normative approaches. The direct involvement of key stakeholders is encouraged where it's appropriate, but not required. And we're expecting robust involvement from other NIH institutes and centers based on the conversations we've had so far, which we're very excited about. I did just want to give you a few minor updates uh, that are being proposed. First, just a bit more about the broad research area, genomics at the institutional and systems level. This area will be new to the PARs. It wasn't in the 2019 uh, um, announcements, but it has been represented on our web pages and in our presentations about our research interests since 2021. The area collects and highlights questions from the three other areas and explores the interplay and influences between genetics and genomics and institutions, government systems, and other organized stakeholders. For example, we might look at genomic technology's effects on human rights law, or how the news media frame and influence genomic research, or the role of genomic data used in the courtroom. Those are just a few examples. You can see lots more, again, on that web page that I'll link to. The second minor update is that as genomics and society both continue to change, as we've, we've been talking about, um, we need to bring uh, new viewpoints and expertise to, devi to define the LC issues and help address them. So the PARs will explicitly emphasize broadening the wide array of disciplines and lived experiences that are represented among our applicants and grantees. Third, we recognize that successful community-oriented projects may require longer project periods. This could be community-based research or anything where a, a good deal of community engagement is required. Um, and uh, that may require more time than LC grants typically allow for. So uh, for example, we typically limit R01 applications to four years or less of funding. And as many of you know, a typical R21 lasts for two years. To address the issue that community-oriented uh, projects may need more time, the new R01 PAR will, will uh, encourage applicants who propose uh, community-oriented work, who anticipate needing a fifth year of support, 
We'll encourage them to contact program officials prior to submission to discuss appropriate project length and budget, which could include a fifth year. For the R21s, we'll be seeking NIH permission. That's, uh, we're asking NIH permission, permission, not councils. We have, we have to ask NIH if they will allow us uh, to entertain requests for three-year R21s rather than two-year R21s. Applicants to both the R01 and R21 uh, will be instructed to contact program, uh, program early on if they anticipate needing an extended project period, and final decisions about the project period and the budgets will be at the discretion of program as they are today. Finally, to improve the understanding and use of demographic population descriptors, for example, measures of race and ethnicity, to, to improve the understanding and use of those in, in LC research, applicants are going to be required to propose demographic variables to be collected, to explain the purpose of those variables in their data analysis plans, and to briefly justify that proposed plan. We hope that, uh, that asking for that information is going to improve the transparency around the use of, of uh, these variables and improve all of our understanding about, of, of how they could, should, and might be used. Uh, that is, uh, I'd like to thank my colleagues for their help and guidance, and that concludes my formal presentation. I'd be happy to take questions and discuss the concept with council. Lisa Parker, please. <clears throat> please. Sure, thank you. Um, and this question may be slightly out of order uh, in the sense it might be uh, better addressed after our next uh, presentation of, of a concept, but I wanted to relate the two as they both have to do with Elsie to ask the following question. Um, and the most succinct way is to refer to the second concept clearance where there's um, a statement that genomic science and medicine is the established focus of the LC research program. And yet some of the examples that I think you gave when you were elaborating on institutional level, uh, and one might say, yeah, institutional and systems level considerations, one might even say genomics and social cultural structures um, might move beyond medicine. Uh, so how is this um, expansion or expansive understanding going to be negotiated and communicated? Um, with with potential applicants. Well, Lisa, we're, we've been communicating it for quite some time. Uh, I don't think any of these topics are, are particularly new. And as I noted, um, the the new area really is mostly a result, uh, or not mostly, but the questions that we pose as sample questions come from the the, the research questions that we've been posting for for years. Um, and so, I think. The reason, the reason that we are emphasizing those interests in, in, in the LC PARs is because we see, um, you know, and we, we saw this in, um, in the 2020 uh, strategic plan, you know, the beginning of that plan starts by saying genomics is really not limited to NHGRI anymore. It is, it, it is all over NIH. Uh, we, we hear questions about the LC of genomics uh, coming from colleagues, various different pla places, and and of course, as genomics uh, is you know as genomic data are easier to, to create, um, other people are using them for lots of different things that that are not me medical. So um, we thought it was a, a more than appropriate time to sort of re-emphasize, I think, and draw attention. Um, and we'll and we will you know as we talk about the new the new pars, we will make it clear that you know, this area is out there um, and continue to talk about it and, and try to generate interest among a diverse array of scholars, some of who may not consider themselves LC researchers. I hope that's helpful. Laura? Laura? Oh. <laughs> I need you. So thank you for um, presenting this. And, and this area of research, I think, is critically important. You know, as I as I look at some of the LC research, I'm really struck by how quickly we are building our scientific base, but yet how slowly we are implementing 
our genomic uh, findings. And, you know, how I'm, I'm wondering, you know, kind of how you are thinking about that, because I, I think that there's really this disconnect between the two of them. Well, I mean, I don't mean to make light of this I th um, at all. It's a great question. Um, I mean, I think some people might say that LC is maybe the reason, reason that um, there's slower implementation <laughs> than we might like to see. You know, we, we sort of joke that um, some people see LC as the, the brakes on the Lamborghini, and no one buys the Lamborghini for the brakes. So, um, y you know, but uh, I think that it can be frustrating, and um, LC isn't just about um, tapping the brakes and waving our arms and saying no. Um, and we very much intend to re-emphasize the idea that LC is here not just to ask questions, but to help address the issues that, that are existing so that we can implement in ways that benefit broad segments of, of the population. Kyle, did you have your hand up? I did. Okay. Yeah, just um, a few comments. Uh, first of all, I, in response, uh, to Lisa's question about um, about area implications not in medicine, I think you know it, it's sort of inherent to uh, our work. E even if in the NIH viewed health in a very narrow sense, LC uh, is about the implications of the science, and the implications don't don't just they're not just limited to health. And so, anytime we're exploring, you know, what are the what are the downstream effects of the science that's that's being done? Uh, we really need to think about it. Its implications outside of health as well. That's just sort of I think uh, the I and LC requires that. Um, yeah. Uh, otherwise, Dave, I, I just wanted to uh, voice my uh, very strong support for what's uh, being proposed for these uh, kind of you know uh, slight revisions to the plan uh, about how PARs have gone in the past. I think extending the duration of time addresses a major concern that's been expressed, you know, all over the place uh, about um, the way research um, funding accommodates or fails to accommodate community engagement. So I think this is really a great step in the right direction. Um, our R21s in two years, it's it's really hard to do anything, you know, in, in two years. So, um, and especially if there's community engagement. So I think that's a, a especially uh, valuable um, move. Uh, I think the, um, um, the ex not the expansion, but at least the recognition of uh, systems issues as an important part of LC is, is a really critical move. I think that's really well thought out as well. Um, yeah, and and so uh, I I will just say um, in response to Laura's uh, point that um, you know there there has and, and continues to be quite a bit of embedded LC research, which I think is um, the portfolio for the LC program really needs both the embedded effort and the independent effort. Um, some of the LC work that's about pushing down the gas and not tapping the brake happens in that embedded work where you're really helping to solve uh, challenges that the sort of group collaborating together is encountering and having LC folks at the table, both to do original research as part of that embedded effort and also to sort of help address challenges is, is really a critical role for LC to play in NHGRI's portfolio. But this um, independent work separate from embedded settings, uh, typically, I mean, most of the PARs uh, fund that kind of work, it is really important to sort of move into new areas and areas where, you know, there's really not embedded work happening yet. So in any case, uh, just wanted to voice my strong um, support for this uh, renewal. Other questions or comments from council? Okay, can I get a motion to approve the concept? Second, all in favor? Anyone opposed? Anyone wishing to abstain? Thank you very much. Thank oh, are you abstaining, Judy?
I was advised to because I was not here for the Fine. formal presentation. Understood. You didn't hear the whole presentation. Okay, that's right. appropriate. Heard the end part. Right. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you, Dave. Thanks so much, everyone. All Thank right. you, Council. Nicole, you want to come up, please?